good morning welcome to unit number four in unit number four we will see a few electrical machines which we use in our day-to-day -day life and later on we will move on to the basic electronic and electrical components and the electrical information which you should know as an engineer so first of all let me start with the basic electrical machines the first among these electrical machines is a single phase transformer. In today's lecture, we will discuss about a single phase transformer. What is the principle of single phase transformer? How does it operate? What is its working? What are the important components? And what are its major applications? For you particularly, because you are an electronics and communication engineer. So let's see how a transformer will be helpful for you at the end of the class. Okay. And also we will do some numerical problems on the single phase transformer. Okay. So in the previous lecture, in unit number 3, we have seen average and RMS values of AC signals. We have seen single phase AC circuits. Then we have also seen three phase star and delta connected circuits. We have seen how to calculate impedance. We have seen how to calculate the current and what happens when there are three phases and what is the difference between star and delta connection. So, in unit number 4, in particular today's lecture, I hope that by the end of this today's video lecture, you will be able to describe the construction, working principle and also the applications of single phase transformer. And I hope that you will be able to determine the EMF which is developed in a single phase transformer based upon the terms which it has. So, I will start with what actually a transformer is and then we will move on in detail about the transformer so no matter how much you wonder a transformer can be very small just which can be in your hand to a very big size which you can see which may be of the size of a one single portion one single housing portion so the size of the transformer will vary but if you carefully observe, transformer is a static device, nothing in that is going to move. So it is basically a static device. So what it actually does then? A transformer, it helps in transformation of power from one circuit to other circuit. Now the question arises, what are these two circuits? So to be very simple, let us suppose there is one circuit. I will draw here. There is one circuit and I do not. I do have two circuits now, they are not electrically touching. There is no electrical contact between them. And when there is no electrical contact between them, you want to transmit the power from here to here. Then, without an electrical contact, transformer provides you an option for transferring power from one circuit to other circuit, which are electrically isolated. Then the question immediately arises, how the power is being transmitted? There is one way of transmitting the power. That is not by conduction because we don't have any electrical contact. That is possible through mutual induction. So transformer works on this principle of mutual induction, which means the energy is transmitted from this position to this position through magnetic field through magnetic field and the principle involves mutual induction okay so if anybody asks you what is the principle of transformer you can easily say it works on the principle of mutual inductance so magnetic field will be set up by this coil through which energy is transferred from here to here and then again it is converted into electrical pump so transformer is a simple static device which transmits power from one circuit to another circuit which are electrically isolated so one thing which we have understood it transforms the transmits power without electrical connection then without electrical connection means how using mutual induction principle 
using mutual induction for this program. This I will explain it in detail. In this process of transmitting power from one circuit to another circuit, it will do one job. See, let us suppose this electrical energy is available at V1 voltage. When you are transmitting it through your mutual inductance or magnetic field, again you will be getting electrical energy here, but the voltage level may be varied. See, transmitted along with variation of voltage and current levels. Variation of voltage and current levels. So, this is the principle of transformer. Why it is used? It is used to transmit the power between isolated electrical circuits. Second thing, it can be used to raise or lower voltage levels or current levels. Understood? So, these two are the principal applications of transformer. One is to transmit power without electrical contact. Number two is to raise or decrease voltage level or current level. Understood. Now, how does it happen? As already said, it works on the principle of mutual inductance. See, this is one coil where you will be providing inputs, and there is another coil. This is your output coil. And these two coils are linked by a magnetic field if you carefully observe, right? Magnetic fields. Understood. So this magnetic coupling, I call it as magnetic coupling. It helps in transmitting power from this circuit to this circuit. Energy is transmitted through this magnetic field. Okay. Now let's see in detail. Now what I have shown you is two windings. One is a input winding, the other one is an output winding, right? Now, these two are magnetically coupled, isn't it? So, a two winding transformer has two windings which are electrically isolated but magnetically coupled. If one winding is provided for the it is available to the other wind without any electrical connection. And in this process, voltage levels and current levels can be adjusted based upon the requirements. Okay. But you should remember this is the most important part. It works only with AC supply. That I will say in the next slide why it happens. And next is as I have shown you, there are two windings, right? To one winding, I am giving supply, to the other winding, I am taking the output. So the winding to which input is given, it is called as primary wind. It is called as primary wind. To which your output is being taken, it is called as secondary wind. Okay, secondary winding. Okay. Right. So now this is a picture of your transformer, true picture, which can be helpful for you. See, this is primary winding, which is wound here. Let us suppose the number of turns is given by NP. NP turns. This is your secondary winding where NS is a number of turns. Now these two are coupled by a magnetic flux. And this is some leakage magnetic flux which is linking only with coil 1 and not with coil 2. And this is only linking with coil 2 and not with linking 1. But magnetic leakage flux is generally less than 5%. So most of the flux will be linking both the two coils. Okay, that's what this linkage flux is. Okay. Now <coughs> we will move on to the basic components here. Now see here. It consists of two winding. See why this see for your target is that whatever the flux which is there developed on one side should link the other one so that magnetic coupling will be strong. So which material helps in transmission of magnetic lines very uh, densely? One is ferromagnetic materials. So you do require a ferromagnetic material to transmit the electric flux, right? So that's why this material is called as a core, which is basically made up of ferromagnetic material, and it helps in bonding a very tight relation between the primary and secondary winding with the help of a magnetic flux. Okay. Now, how many components you see in this one? One is a winding, two windings are there. One is primary, the other one is secondary. These are just coils, right? These are just windings. 
What are they made up of? They are made up of copper. Copper is the best thing which can be worn very easily because these are supposed to carry current. These are electromagnetic type of things. So you should carry more amount of current. So copper is one such material which can carry heavy currents and can behave like a magnet when current is when it is warm. Okay. So this is winding, normally copper coils. And see this is core, what we call it as, which is a strong uh, ferromagnetic material. You can use iron or you can use advanced steel materials are available, just like your silicon steel, etc. etc. Those are available. That you can see in your next higher semesters when I will be teaching the electrical machines in detail. But as of now, see the important components are one is windings or coils which are made up of copper. The other one is a core which is basically made up of iron or silicon steel. See, the major components of a transformer. The first one is core which is made up of, yeah, this is a question. Why laminated sheets are used? Why? Because if you use a single material, it may get heated. So to avoid that thing, what we do is nothing but you take parts of steel and then you join them. Okay. So, and in between these parts of steel, what laminations of steel, you will be using a plastic material or an insulating material. Okay. So that I will show you in the class. Actually, I'll get you a small transformer and I will show you what actually how it will be. Okay. Now, this core provides a path for the magnetic flux. Okay. Now, the second one is at windings. The transformer has two sets of windings. Normally, you can have third set or fourth set also. But at here, UG level, two winding transformers is necessary. It is sufficient. So primary winding is connected to the source. Secondary winding is connected to the load. Okay. Normally these windings are made up of copper or aluminium. Now, next comes insulation. You see, copper windings are wound one on the other. So they must be properly insulated. Otherwise, it will result in a short circuit. It's just wire winding, right? So it must be properly insulated. So they will use enamel or paper. So that the windings get insulated from each other. So that they won't result in short circuit. And this entire transformer is kept in a tank where you will be having bushings. Bushings are nothing but you have wound it, right? So the wires, right? They must be brought out so that they can be given to some electrical circuit. And bushings are that structures where, which help us in order to provide this wire ends to some electrical out uh, external connections. Okay. Normally bushings are made up of porcelain or other uh, insulating materials. Okay, so apart from this, you can have tap changing mechanism. If it is a large uh, capacity transformer, you should provide cooling also because large currents will be flowing. Uh, the coil may burn, may burn up. So cooling system is to be provided, and it must be protected against some faults. Normally, there are different types of faults which happen. So protection devices will be used, cooling systems will be used, tap changing mechanisms will be used. So what we have discussed is the basic things. The core, the coil, the insulation, the bushings. Apart from this, this other mechanisms will also be there for a transfer. Okay. Now, moving ahead. Now, how it works with the... So, now let's see the working of a transformer. How it basically works. So, before that, let me draw a figure here. So, now I do have... Yeah. Now, I do have two coils. Now, this is your primary winding. Let us suppose. And this is my secondary winding. Okay. Now it, these are this indication uh, represents that these are magnetically coupled. Now what I'm doing is see carefully. This is my primary winding. I'm providing it with a voltage V1. This is my input. When I provide it with some excitation, automatically what happens? There will be a current flowing in the circuits. See, my V1 is leading to I1. When I1 is flowing in the circuit, this is a coil, right? So automatically what happens? It tries to develop a magnetic field, right? So what happens? There will be a magnetic field developed. Why? Because your I1 is flowing through a coil, it develops a magnetic flux, right? Now this magnetic flux, what happens? It links both the coils. Irrespective of the circuit, it links the coils. It is just like a medium, right? So magnetic medium is being developed. Now, we stick on to your Faraday's laws, right? What is a Faraday's law state? 
any conductor which cuts a magnetic field, whether spatially or with respect to time. EMF is generated, right? So now two coils, two coils, they are cutting magnetic fields because this magnetic field is this is time varying in nature. AC, na? this is AC, so this is time varying magnetic flux. So automatically EMF can be induced in both sides. So on primary side E1 will be there and on secondary side also E2 will be there. So now what has happened? Your V1 has given rise to I1. Now both are moving with phi. Here E1 is developed. Here E2 is developed. Okay. Now this E1 which is on the primary sides, E1 it opposes V1. The very cause of its source. But whereas E2 it also opposes V1 but at the same time it drives a current I2. Let us suppose if you are connecting a load here. So E2 drives I2 if path is provided. So when there is an I2 automatically what will happen? Wheat. So the terminal voltage is wheat. Now see here what I have done. I have provided V1 I1 here. What I am getting here? I am getting here V2 I2. Right. V1 I1 is the input power. V2 I2 is the output power which I am getting. This is how transformer works. Okay, so this is what I have mentioned here. Primary winding is excited by voltage V1. It will allow the current I1 to pass through it, thereby developing a magnetic flux here, phi. Now this flux links both the coils and develops E1 and E2. Right, this E1, it opposes V1. This E2, it drives current I2, which develops your V2. Right, this is how your transformer is going to work. Okay, so there are two types of transformers before I stop this video. One transformer is called as a core type transformer, the other one is called as a shell type transformer. See, this is your core type transformer and this is your shell type transformer. Here only uh, One winding will be worn here, the other one will be worn here. Okay, this is type of a core type of transformer. This is a shell type of transformer where you will be having right. This is primary winding and this is here secondary winding. Okay, so this is core type and shell type of transformers based upon the type, uh, based upon the how they are wound on the these are called as a limbs okay how many limbs you are choosing for winding the coil this is the classification okay so i'll stop my lecture here and in the next lecture we will continue uh, the applications of single phase transformer and also we will see what is the emf equation which is developed emf which is developed in the transformer